In this lesson, we're looking at how to solve equations that include squares. First, let's review some vocabulary. An exponent is the small number tells us how many times to multiply that number. How many times to multiply a number? For example, if we have, let's say we have 3 to the second power, that tells me I'm multiplying the number 3 two times because the exponent is 2, so it tells me I'm going to multiply the 3 two times. So 3 to the second power or 3 squared means 3 times 3, which is 9. When a number is squared, that just means it's to the second power, which means the exponent is 2. So anything that has the exponent of 2, so 5 to the second power is called 5 squared. The square root is what is the inverse operation of squaring a number. So if I have, for example, square root of 25, it means what number did I multiply by itself twice, because squaring means twice, to get that value. So for 25, I multiplied 5 by itself two times. So the square root of 25 is 5. And technically, every square root has two answers, the positive and the negative. And that is because 5 squared equals 25, but negative 5 squared that's negative 5 times negative 5, is also a positive 25. So technically, every square root has two answers, a positive and a negative. If it asks for the principal root, then it's specifically asking just for the positive root. So let's just practice some square roots before we get into our equations. Find the square root of each perfect square. So square root of 25, we just did, was 5. The square root of 49 would be 7, and that is because 7 times 7 is 49. However, make sure you write the answer as 7, not 7 times 7. The answer to square root of 49 is just 7. We're just thinking 7 times 7 is 49 to help us get to that answer. So then number 3, what times itself is 100? That's going to be 10. 10 times 10 is 100. And on number 4, what times itself is 16? And that's 4. 4 times itself is 16. So now we're going to go back to solving equations where we do inverse operations. If it's adding, you subtract. If it's multiplying, you divide. Inverse operations. And now if we're squaring, the opposite is to take the square root. So on number 5, the goal is to get the x by itself. But it's not. it looks like it's by itself, but it's not because it still has that exponent. So to get rid of the exponent of a square, the opposite is to take a square root. But then, just like every other equation, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So if I take the square root of the left-hand side, then I have to take the square root of the right-hand side. And on the left, because squaring and square rooting are inverses, they cancel each other out. And that's going to just leave us with our variable x, which is what we wanted. And then on the right-hand side, the square root of 16 is 4. And we're just going to focus on the principal root, so the positive root. So number 6, again, I see that squared. To get rid of that, I'm going to take the square root. Must do the same to both sides. Those are inverses, so they cancel each other out. We're left with our variable. Square root of 36 is 6. And again, we're just focusing on the principal root. Starting with the next one, we do still have the x squared, but it's not by itself yet. 
before you can take the square root, you have to make sure that variable is by itself first. So we've got to get rid of this plus 2 by, again, using inverse operations. So the inverse of plus 2 will be minus 2. Again, you've got to do the same thing on both sides because plus 2 and minus 2 make 0, so they cancel each other out. And 11 minus 2 is 9. And then I can take the square root of both sides because those are inverses and the square root of 9 is 3. On number 8, again the x squared is not by itself yet. We've got it being multiplied by 3. The opposite is to divide by 3. So we do that on both sides. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so it cancels each other out. There's my x squared. And that is now equal to 4. Now that the x is by itself, I can get rid of that square by taking the square root. And the square root of 4 is 2. This one we've got a couple steps first. We got something being multiplied and subtracted. We always want to do add subtract first. We're doing essentially doing order of operations backwards because we're undoing what we've done. So we're going to add 3 first because that's the inverse of minus 3. This makes 0. That's what we wanted. And 47 plus 3 is 50. And then we divide both sides by 5 because that's the opposite of multiplying by 5 is to divide by 5. 50 divided by 5 is 10. And then the last step then is to take the square root. And this time, the square root of 10 is not a perfect square. So we would have to put that in the calculator. You can put the square root of 10 in your calculator. And we get 3 point, we can round, we'll round to the nearest hundredth, so 3.16. And it's okay if you get a, a non-perfect square. You just can leave it as square root of 10, or you can get it to its decimal form. And on the last one, we're going to start by subtracting 1 from both sides to get that 1 away, 0. So then we have 4 fifths x squared. 8 minus 1 is 7. And then our next step, we would have to, this 4 fifths is being multiplied. So the opposite is to divide by 4 fifths. So I'm going to write that for a second first, divide by 4 fifths. But think about how we divide fractions. We divide fractions by keeping the first one the same. So that 4 fifths on top here is going to stay the same. And then we change this to multiplying, and we flip this fraction upside down. So dividing by 4 fifths is the same thing as multiplying by 5 over 4. Because to divide, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. It's going to cancel out here. And on this side, I can do 7 over 1. And to multiply fraction, multiply straight across. So 7 times 5 is 35. 1 times 4 is 4. And I can do this two ways. I can go ahead and turn this into a decimal now. Or I'm going to go ahead and finish solving first. So square root of both sides. So now on my calculator, I'm just going to find the square root of... 35 over 4, and that is rounded to the nearest hundredth, 2.96.